Welcome to Live on Purpose Radio with Dr. Paul Jenkins, where you will hear inspiring stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Feed your mind with a regular dose of positive energy and show up for your life every day on purpose. Living on purpose means that you have a purpose and you do it intentionally. And now, here's your host, Dr. Paul. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Live On Purpose Radio. <sighs> I had this weird idea today. I'm thinking happiness. Yeah. When's the last time we talked about happiness at Live On Purpose Radio? Well, it might have been the last episode, but here's where we're going today. I have a friend and associate here with me in the office today. I know this remarkable woman through the National Speakers Association, which is where a lot of my fantastic guests come from, because it's a place where speakers gather to to refine their craft, really, and to figure out how to get a message out to the world in a powerful way. And I have with me here today, Abby Stevens. Say hello, Abby. Hello. I'm so glad you're here today. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here. I think we're going to have some fun. Me too. In fact, we already have, <laughs> because I, I'm asking Abby before the show, folks, so let's do a sound check. Tell me where you're from. And you say... Cokeville. Cokeville, Wyoming. <laughs> what are the chances that the guy interviewing you at Live On Purpose Radio today is not from Cokeville, but knows a whole bunch of people from Cokeville? And has actually been there, because... Nobody's ever been there. And that's saying something because there aren't really a whole bunch of people in Cokeville. Exactly. But I know several. <laughs> so, so we had a fun little chat about that. Fun connections that we make. Right. Small world. Abby, that's not why you came today, though. No. You've got a message that is powerful, and I heard you speak at, it was an event several months ago. Now, that doesn't matter. But I heard you speak, and as you were speaking, I was touched with your message. Tell us your story. I don't want to spoil it for everybody because it's your story, but give us the background behind this. Why are you a speaker, and what is it that puts you in a position where you have this message? And I think your story is what supports that. Okay. Where did it start for you? Well, it, the story itself started... Almost 18 years ago. Next month will be 18 years. 18 years, okay. Yeah, June 21st. Uh, my now husband and I were engaged to be married. We had a week left to wait. and A long week. Yeah, that last long week countdown. Mm. And we were actually on our way to Cokeville. Uh, uh. Up to a wedding, the wedding reception of my cousin who had been married that day. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, of course, so, you know, all of my family, my parents, grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles, everybody had been to Salt Lake that day for her wedding. Mm -hmm. And then the reception was that night in Cokeville. Okay. So we all headed up, headed up to Cokeville. And uh, about just outside of Evanston, Wyoming, if you know where that is. Yeah. In between Evanston and Rich County, Utah. I've been to Cokeville, remember? Oh, that's right. That, <laughs> that's that little road. So it's that little yeah. and, and not very well-traveled highway. This is rural western United rural, States, very folks. Very rural. Yeah. So not well-traveled. And, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere there. Mm -hmm. I was asleep. I was reclined in my seat. Mm -hmm. uh, part of my message is being safe as well. So don't ever recline mm. in your seat when you're traveling, by the way. Uh, my cute husband, well, slash fiance then, mm -hmm. was driving. And we had also not put our seat belts on that day. Oh. Right. Okay. Which you was the only time. You can all see where this time. is going, I'm sure. <laughs> A little foreshadowing here. Okay. okay. So what happened? So we get to a little curve in the road. He glanced down at me just briefly. 
Um, his beautiful fiance slumbering sleeping. in his seat beside him. Are you going to write my book for me? That'd be great. I'll write you an endorsement. Okay. <laughs> so he looks down, and right then the road curved just a little, and, he, and the car just went off the road just a little bit. Hit the gravel shoulder, mm. which is very loud at you know only 60, 65 miles an hour, but still very loud. This woke me up. He overcorrected over into the other lane. Mm. There weren't a lot of cars on the road, but as I woke up and sat up, I thought a car was right in front of us in the other lane. And I remember yelling and grabbing his arm and yelling, watch out, which scared him again. He mm. overcorrects again off onto the side, off the side of the road. And there was a dip, a wash, a little ditch, mm. so to speak, but it was dry mm-hmm. and hit that. We roll one time, oh. flipped our car, rolled one time, landed on the wheels I'm not where I was sitting anymore. No, not after all that. Right. So I'm kind of laying with my head in the back seat, feet where I used to be sitting. This red clay dirt is everywhere. It just poofed up. It was a dry dry June day. And he couldn't see me there where I was supposed to be. And I could hear him calling my name. He finally saw that he saw my feet there, came back around to the back door, And I kind of felt like I was in a dream. I had just been asleep. Yeah. I couldn't, I really did, I had a hard time figuring out if it was real. Right. And I remember actually saying to him, tell me this is a dream. Oh, really? I did. Interesting. And he said, no, this is real. And I said, then pray. Uh. So, now, remember 18 years ago, not a lot of cell phones. Right. Okay. <laughs> and I I like to share when I speak uh, the fact that, you know, the cell phones then were called a brick. The brick. The brick, right? I had one, we, <laughs> I didn't even have one. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, we didn't have one. And apparently the car that was coming, they happened to have one. And they okay. called for help. Took about 15 minutes for the first help to get there. It's that far out mm-hmm. of the way of mm-hmm. things. Make a long story short, they uh, got me out of the car. Um, I, I was in and out of consciousness, wasn't really aware of what's going on. So you knew you were hurt. I knew I was hurt. I, I could see my feet, and I couldn't feel them, and I couldn't move them. Oh, scary. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I knew it was bad. Okay. And But I also... Part of my message is the fact that even in the middle of something so scary and tragic, yeah, when you have faith and believe in something, it can get you through it. Yeah. And so my faith yeah. at that point, I felt a peace. As mm-hmm. scary as this whole situation was, I felt a peace that just came over me and I knew I'd be okay. And they mm-hmm. were getting me out and... Um, put me in a in in an ambulance to wait. They had called for the life flight to come from the University of Utah Hospital. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. And so I I was waiting in this this the ambulance and and this I know just from what they told me because I wasn't really aware or able to see what was going yeah. on. But they had stopped traffic on this little highway, which wasn't a lot, but there were a few cars lined up mm-hmm. um, so that they could let the helicopter land there on the road. There was really no other place to land. Mm -hmm. And Cole, that's my husband, Mm -hmm. said he had been praying for help. And he glanced up the road at this line of cars. And he was sitting in one of the emergency vehicles with one of the EMTs. Mm -hmm. And he glanced up and he said to the EMT, you have to stop that car, it's her parents. So remember, all of my family had wow. been in Salt Lake that day, and they were coming back, they too. They were coming home, too? Yeah, they were coming back, too. Right. And totally side story, my mom had to go to Provo that day to her oncologist. Uh-huh. She had had breast cancer. So oh, we've wow. had we've seen many miracles Whole in my family. Whole other story. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of miracle stories in my family, but... 
Wow. So that's another story another day, mm-hmm. but that's where mm-hmm. they had been, and that's why they were coming a little later as well. Yeah. And later, my mom said she, as they came up to this line of cars, she immediately recognized and felt as a mom. Yeah, this is of, one of my children. Because moms know stuff. They mom, yeah, that mother's intuition. So there we how, were. How bad was it? They, they said I breathed on my own to the hospital. But when they got me there, they had to intubate because mm. they did figure out that I was starting to shut down. And the reason was I had broken my neck. Okay. I broke my neck at the level of C3-4 cervical oh boy. right up at the top even with your jaw controls everything from the shoulders down and at that point you were paralyzed i was paralyzed couldn't feel couldn't move now was c not c3 c4 right uh you and i both know chad hymas yep sound familiar yep um, right there chad is quadriplegic yep so these injuries that you sustained had left you paralyzed in a similar way. You were also yes. quadriplegic. I was quadriplegic. That's what they told my family. They said she is quadriplegic. And they said the word complete quadriplegic. And later mm. explained that what that means is that they said my spinal cord was severed. It's a complete versus incomplete injury. Wow. Okay. So the, this is all se- settling in later on because in the moment you just you were in and out. Right. This realization that your whole life changed in that moment. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that there's a lot more to this story and we're not going to get to the whole thing today. Right. But just to establish that as the starting point, you walked into my office today. Yep. And it didn't shock me, Abby, because I've seen you walk all over the place. <laughs> I had to put your headphones on for you today. Yep. So there's some there's still some paralysis. Right. But you walked out of the hospital. Yes. 3 how, months later. How does that happen? That happens first of all by a miracle. Uh-huh. And we believed in that. Again, that believing and know everything was going to be okay. I had a strong faith. Second of all is attitude. And okay. when they said, she will never walk, I said, oh, yes, I will. <laughs> Them's fighting words. Yeah. I'm kind of a fighter. So ask my yeah. mom. <laughs> so, and, and I love that you mentioned that. When I asked you before the show today, Abby, what is your message to the world? And you said it in one word. Happiness. Yeah. Here's a story where something happened to you that might suggest to some people that happiness is no longer an option. Right. Your life gets to stink from now on. Right. Done. Over. You weren't willing to accept that. No. And even at the level of, oh, not going to walk again? Watch me. Right. (laughs) Which is kind of the attitude thing. Right, right. Um, but also just maintaining a positive, a positive take on whatever you're facing. Yep. And that helps you to get through some really tough times. Yes, absolutely. Which is also creating a message that you share. Yes. Yep. Um, my, my website is titled Rise and Walk. Don't mm. let life keep you down. So... That is my message. No matter what you're going through, you can rise above. And it's all with your attitude and how you look at life, what mindset you have, and whether you're going to say, fine, I'll lay here and die, or no way. I will overcome this, and I'll be happy about it, too. (laughs) Well said. I think we better follow up on that right after the break. Sounds good. Hi, my name is Chris Crone, and thank you for listening to Live On Purpose Radio. I became financially independent, starting from nothing, by the age of 26. My purpose is to financially liberate the captive. Are you searching for a realistic, proven system in real estate to create enough residual income to retire or fund your dreams? 
I invite you to learn about a passive turnkey proven system and approach to real estate where my team of 200 experts can do all the heavy lifting to create the freedom you're searching for. Visit www.liveonpurpose.strongbrook.com to get a free copy of my book, The Straight Path to Real Estate Wealth. Just enter the code FREE at www.liveonpurpose.strongbrook.com. Thank you for listening to Live on Purpose Radio. We're so glad to have you here. Please come by the website, drpauljenkins.com, spelled with a D-R, drpauljenkins.com. On the website, you'll have an opportunity to receive a free download. And while you're there, make sure you click on the social media icons. Come over to Facebook, where we will be posting these episodes as well as our YouTube videos and other content and announcements for you to share. Please like us, comment, subscribe, join the conversation. We're happy to have you with us here at Live On Purpose Radio. Let's all support each other to live on purpose. DrPaulJenkins.com Great leaders are almost always great simplifiers who can cut through argument, debate, and doubt to offer a solution everybody can understand. General Colin Powell I'm, I'm just trying to imagine this, Abby. You know, I am so grateful for a body that works. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm as grateful as you are, <laughs> you know, after what you've been through. Yeah. And I know your body doesn't always do what you want it to do, but you walked into this office today. You came up a flight of stairs to get here. Right. After someone told you that you were a complete quadriplegic. Right. That's cool. Thanks. <laughs> but it's, it's neat. It is. it is. You know? You have a reputation now. Mm-hmm. And I know that when you speak and, and take the platform, and even among your friends, people see you as a happy person. And you've got this engaging, vivacious personality, and mm. you're always dancing, <laughs> it's singing. Yeah, you well. broke into song. Right? <laughs> okay, how do you do it? How do you always stay happy? Okay, I don't always. That's the key word. Ah. Okay, so we're all human. Yeah, um, that's the point. That's though. the point. We're human. We all have something hard to go through. Okay, so maybe you're not going to break your neck. And be paralyzed and have then, on, for me, I only, my right side doesn't work as well. Mm-hmm. I walk with a limp. I do have balance issues. Mm-hmm. I, my right arm doesn't work. Um, it has a little bit of movement, which I know there's a signal getting there. So mm. I'm hopeful, very hopeful, and have a really positive attitude that someday we're going to get something somewhere with this You're figure scientific out stuff they're doing too. with stem cells. Yeah. But, but in the meantime... I'm not going to sit and sulk about it and wait around. So I have things to do. I have places to be. And I'm a mom of four. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I, uh, that says a lot right yeah, there. There's, well, there's, that's another whole story. Yeah. With having four under four, I had twins as well with one good arm. Oh, wow. So, you know, so this, this, this is what's funny. My friends, people I engage, you know, in wor- at work or different things. How do you do it? How do you do right. this with a smile on your face? Right. Well, you just do, okay? It, it, now, there's human emotions. We have natural human emotions. <sighs> Trust me, there are days when I get so frustrated and I cry. Oh, plus, I'm a woman, right? Okay, mm. we cry. So I cry, I get frustrated, I get kind of angry sometimes um, when I have to actually plan my day around who's going to help me. Uh, reach up in the cupboard that I can't reach because I, there's no climbing on anything for me. I can't yeah. climb up on a stool or I'll fall off. Um, you know, things, okay, I want to reach this, but I can't. I guess I'll have to wait till my husband gets home. Um, yeah. I have to plan how I do my day around help. 
Okay. Right. Right. And that's not easy, but I'm okay with it. I've had 18 years to get used to it and I can still be happy about it and show others it's okay. It's we okay. fall down, skin your knees, you're going through something hard, no matter what it is. Yeah. No matter what it is, cry. That's human. Be mad. Be so upset. it doesn't mean that you're being negative? No. That's no, right. It does not. It means I'm expressing human emotion because I'm human. Yeah. And I can think about it, process it, and see, okay, that was really hard. I'm still a happy person. Life is great. So you didn't wake up in that hospital thinking, oh, this is a cool opportunity. Uh, no, not really. No. no. No, I didn't, in fact. Although, is it? You know, yeah. Hmm. Now that you mention it, you know, people will say, if you could go back, have your seatbelt on, all of that, would mm-hmm. you? That is a tough, <sighs> tough question. Yeah. Because do I love this body I'm in? No, mm. I do not. And I really struggle with the parts that don't work yeah. and that. But I have learned so much that I would not have learned otherwise. Right. And it's kind of that catch-22. Yeah, I, I don't prefer this, mm-hmm. but I have sure learned a lot that I really don't think I could do without right now in my right. life. And it makes me who I am. Right. It brought me to this point. Um, I believe we all have a purpose on this earth. Mm -hmm. And I know that part of my purpose is to show people how to be happy when life's hard. And you had to have a hard thing to make that convincing. Right. Right. So the feelings that you have, and I want to underscore that too. Thank you for for so eloquently stating it. The feelings are human. Feel whatever you're going to feel. Right. When we promote pathological positivity here at Live On Purpose Radio, (laughs) it's not about trying to eliminate all of the pain. Right. In fact, pain is going to happen. Right. Tim Hansel said it this way. He said, pain is inevitable. Misery is optional. Right. Exactly. So you're going to feel some pain. Yeah. Be human. Allow yourself to feel that it's okay. It doesn't mean that you're being negative. And at some point, you're in choice. Right. That's what I'm hearing from your story, Abby. Yes. Regardless of what happens. Exactly. So it could be paralysis. It could be financial failure. It could be a death of, of one of your children. Right. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Any extreme of difficulty. Mm. Everything that's hard has the opposite. If we didn't feel the sorrow, the anger, all the negative feelings, the I I don't necessarily mean negative, but the well, painful, down, the painful, uncomfortable, unpleasant, um, discouragement, sadness, discontent. sorrow. Yeah. If we didn't feel those, how would we know how great and beautiful and awesome and happy and joyous the other end could be? Right. It would be so dull on one level. Mm-hmm. So knowing when you hit the bottom, how awesome is the top? Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. When it is so dark, so dark, and things are so hard, how yeah. beautiful is the sunlight when it comes through? Mm. And how would we appreciate Just the that? contrast, huh? Yeah. How could we appreciate how beautiful and awesome life can be if we don't experience those, those downtimes and so, see it as beauty. So, so you're saying that no matter what the challenge is. Mm-hmm. Now, wait a minute. Can we confidently say that? No matter what. Yes, I can confidently say that. <laughs> I think you're more confident than I am, like <laughs> I said earlier. Wow. Yeah. Because you've been in that place. No matter what. There's still a choice. It, absolutely. Your happiness depends on that choice. Yes. Not your circumstances. Right. I didn't choose my circumstances. Now, I, we, uh, right. I made a bad choice to not put my seatbelt on. We all make choices, we make, don't right, we? Right, right. Regrets, okay. Mm. But I am choosing the outcome. I get to choose. 
Where to go from here. Where to go from here. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of a competitive person. And no. a determined person. Yeah. And I kind <laughs> of see it as kind of this battle, okay? And Yeah, or a game. And even. if I'm going to win, I'm not going to let it get me down because then it wins. Right. If I can... St- and, and okay, there are days that I'm like, ooh, I'm down today, but I'm not going to let it... I'm not staying here. I'm not staying here. Right. Rise above and I win. And everybody happens. can do that. Everybody can do that. Yeah. Sometimes harder than others. And I, I get that. That is I get true. That. Yeah. That it, and again, welcome to earth. Right. That's right. kind of how we roll here. It, it's not going to be easy. Right. In fact, I think our addiction to easy gets in our way a lot. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We kind of like that easiest path, right? Mm-hmm. It's the straightest point between. You know. Yeah, we nobody likes to go over the bumps. We're kind of looking to go around them. You know what? I think it's it's actually a merciful truth that we don't have to choose the bumps; they just happen. Right. But then our choice is invoked after that. Because who would choose to go through that? No one. You know. And yeah, I just. It, it, you wouldn't necessarily sign up for those challenges. They're just going to happen. So right. it is what it is. Now, what is my choice in this moment with what is? Right. I'm going to take my one good side, and I'm going to use it, and I'm going to be positive about it. I'm going to learn how to change a diaper with one hand. Mm-hmm. And I did it. I'm going to do all the things a mom does. That was my goal. I still have to be a wife and mother. By the way, we got married 11 months later. Okay. So it wasn't a week. No. After all. It wasn't a week. I was in that hospital, like you said earlier. I was in the hospital for three months. Mm -hmm. I took my first steps a week before I was to be discharged because I told them, I will walk out of this hospital. We got to get going here. And they were working on my good left side that had started getting feeling and movement back. I said, I got to move the right side too. I have to walk. I told Mm -hmm. them I would. So we did some things. And there are some very cool videos of me learning to walk on my website. And a week later, I walked from the hospital doors to the car to go home because I said I would. Again, that kind of determined fighter in me. Mm -hmm. And then... 11, I say 11 months, 11 months from the injury, from the accident. Mm -hmm. We got married. Here we are, 18 years later, four children, and we're happy. It, it's a long road, but we have chosen to make it good. Right. My husband, Cole, could have left. He could have said, no, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not up for this. I don't want a broken wife. Um, he could have just you know, left me right there, I wouldn't have what I have. He chose to make the best of it. He chose Mm -hmm. that because I am who I am and he was already in love with me. Right. That was never a thought for him to leave. We've stayed together. We stuck it through. Okay, has our marriage been perfect? No. (laughs) Whose is? Still ups and downs. Even even without the injury and all those things that come into play. Absolutely. You know, You do what you do because, and you choose, you choose it. Right. You choose it. With whatever package life hands you, run with that one. Exactly. And as you were saying, to to focus on what you do have and what you can do is far more useful than pining away about everything you You don't have or you can't do. Dwelling pulls you down. It pulls you down. Yeah. Yeah. So when you Excellent. accept what you can't do, find a new way to do it. You can right. find a new way. How can I? Yep. Yep. Powerful, Abby. Thanks. Okay, so you mentioned your website. You do have yes. a few videos there. There's I some do. contact information. Yes. If people are interested to have you come and speak for their group with your inspiring message, that's how they can get a hold of you. Yes, absolutely. So let's drive you there, folks. Abby Stevens. With a P-H. Yes. So A-B-B-Y-S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S dot dot net. net. 
Yes. Just remember, you're going to net all kinds of positive stuff if you go there. <laughs> AbbyStevens.net, where you can see the video clips. Um, some of this is vintage stuff from it back is, in the I hospital know. days. I had great 80s hair. I'm just looking saying. at the hairdos of people standing around you, too, and thinking, oh, yeah, I remember that stuff. So yeah, it's a lot it's of great. fun, it's too. It's fun. It's fun. And, and it gives you an idea of, you know, what it's like. Um, mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. a glimpse, just a glimpse. Just a gl- and that's all you need, really, to open your eyes to some possibilities about whatever your package is. And I want you to notice something when you watch those videos. Okay. Just look at my face. And I'm not saying this to brag. Mm. I had a smile on my face. And even I, after watching it after a few years of not, mm-hmm. I'm thinking, why am I smiling? Yeah. I was happy. I was happy to be walking. And as it turns out, it's a choice, isn't it? It's a choice. Powerful message, Abby. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And everybody, go live on purpose. We'll see you.